The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Tonight is our last chance to tell you about Gildy's Blade, the amazing knife spatula that you can get through parquet margarine at a sensational saving. Full details in our next announcement, so have paper and pencil ready. It's a tremendous bargain, brought to you by the margarine that always tastes so good, because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Well, the great Gildersleeve is a busy man, but he's never too busy to give advice to little Leroy, whether he asks for it or not. Today, Leroy's asking for it. Hey, Unc, you got a minute. Huh? Well, I have to get to the office, Leroy. But I want to ask you about a business deal. Business deal? And you're a sharp businessman. Well, yes. What an intelligent little fellow. <laughs> What's on your mind, Leroy? Boss Callahan down the street wants me to take over his paper route. He'll give me half the profits. Half the profits? Sure. All I have to do is fold the papers and deliver them to the people. And what does Buzz Callahan do? He handles the details. De <laughs> details on a paper route? Oh, my goodness. You do need advice. Leroy, you don't want that job. I don't? Of course not. Buzz Callahan sits back and collects the money while you run your legs off? Use your head, Leroy, not your feet. Oh, gosh, I'm just a little kid. <laughs> my head isn't grown up yet. <laughs> your head is just as good as anybody's. Don't forget, Leroy, you're my nephew. Yeah. The men of our family have always done well. We've been leaders, captains of industry. I use my head every day. How do you suppose I got to be water commissioner? Political pull? <laughs> no, Leroy. It's because I did an efficient job. I proved I was capable of running the department. I knew how to get somebody else to do the work. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've got Bessie at the office, Charlie Anderson at the reservoir, and a meter reader. They all work for the water commissioner. Yeah, but that's not helping me. I need some dough. Well, you have your allowance, my boy. Yeah, but it don't stretch far enough anymore. One movie and a couple of bubble gums and I'm busted. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I'll do then. Rather than see you working for Buzz Callahan, I'll give you 50 cents a week to mow the lawn. 50 cents a week? You bet. And here it is, in advance. Oh, boy, thanks, Dunk. I'm going right out and start mowing. Now, wait a minute, Leroy. Huh? There you go, using your feet again. Haven't you gotten anything out of our little talk? Sure. 50 cents. <laughs> Naturally, Leroy. But if you're going to use your head and be a businessman, you'd offer Buzz Callahan a quarter to mow the lawn and keep a quarter for yourself. Say, that's a keen idea. <laughs> Gee, you're smart, Uncle. Well. I bet there's nothing that you don't know. Now, Leroy, there's probably a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> of course, I can't think of them right at the moment. <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. How's the water department? Oh, it's running. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tribute to good management, Bessie. It is? You bet. I can stop, but the water keeps running. And I think I'll stop for a while. Uh, now, let's see what we have to do. Bessie, what's on the calendar for today? April 12th. What? <laughs> and a quarter moon. A quarter, oh my goodness. Bessie, I mean, do I have any appointments? Has anybody called? Well, the phone was ringing when I came from the malt shop this morning. Malt shop? Who was it, Bessie? So I ran down the hall, and when I got to the door, it was locked, and the phone kept ringing, and I couldn't find my keys in my purse, and the phone rang and rang. Hurry, Bessie, hurry. Yes, sir. Well, I finally found my keys, and I got the door open, and I rushed inside while the phone kept ringing and ringing. Bessie, who was it? I don't know. They hung up. Oh. <laughs> and then the phone rang again. Bessie, I can't go through another phone call. 
But this was Judge Hooker. Oh, the judge? Yes, he said to tell you he'd be by your house this evening. He said he wanted some advice. Advice? Well, that's the second time this morning I've been asked for advice. It isn't even 10 o'clock yet. Mr. Gildersleeve, will you give me some advice? Of course, Bessie. What do you want to know? Mr. Gildersleeve, every time I go to the malt shop, a tall, handsome man winks at me. Oh? Well, what's your problem? Should I wink back? (laughs) (laughs) My advice, Bessie, is strictly about business. Well, he winks at me during business hours. (laughs) What a secretary. What a wonderful time of day. Between sunset and dusk. So quiet. Not a human sound to break the silence. Gildy! Oop. <laughs> Still not a human sound. <laughs> what the old goat wants. Hello, Judge. Evening, Gildy. Can I have a little talk with you before dinner? Of course, Horace. Come on in the house. Thank you. There you are. Miss Gildy! Yes, Bertie? You got to get rid of that old goat. Shh! <laughs> Bertie, he's here. Well, you got to get rid of that old goat Leroy brought home. Oh, Leroy's old goat. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. What about Leroy and a goat? That's what he's got, a goat. That's just what he's got. Oh, for where did Leroy get a goat? I don't know where he got it, but I know where it's got to go. Now, Bertie, don't get excited. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, he ate every flower in the pansy bed. What, Bertie? And you ought to see my clothesline. That goat's got a goat. Did he eat the clothesline, too, Bertie? No, sir, he didn't eat the clothesline. Well, good. He ate your socks off the clothesline. <laughs> What a judge. That goat's into everything. That's the nosiest old goat I ever saw. That goat's got to go. All right, Bertie. Mr. Gillespie, you know what that goat's got to do? Yes, Bertie. That's right. That goat's got to go. <laughs> uh, I gotta go, too. I'll be back in a minute, Judge. All right. Leroy? Are you in there, Leroy? Yeah, come on in. Leroy, Bertie tells me you brought home a goat. Yeah, king, huh? Young man, that goat's got to go. But, uh, I know how you like animals, my boy, but this is going too far. He's already trampled our pansy bed and eaten my socks off the clothesline. Just your old green ones, Unc. Maybe he thought they were big leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of argyle leaves, Leroy? Uh, now, you'll have to take that goat back where you got him, you understand? Okay. Gosh, he's my first big business deal. Uh, business deal? Sure, Unc. Remember you told me to use my head and hire Buzz Callahan to mow the lawn for half of what you pay me? Well, yes. Buzz wouldn't do it, so I bought a goat to eat the grass. (laughs) Eat the grass? Sure. We're both businessmen, Unc. You got Bessie and Uncle Charlie and the meat reader working for you, and I got the goat working for me. But, Leroy, a goat won't eat all that grass. He will when he finishes the pansies. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, how much did you pay for that goat? Three bucks on the installment plan. Only three bucks for a whole goat? Yeah. For some reason, the man didn't want him around anymore. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. You're paying me 50 cents a week to cut the grass, and I pay the man a quarter a week for the goat. I clear a quarter, and the goat does all the work. Say, that's pretty shrewd thinking of that. But you deserve the credit, Unc. I do. You told me how to be a businessman. Yeah, I guess I did. So I can keep the goat, huh, Unc? I'm just a little kid. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what's wrong with a little kid having a goat? (laughs) Don't worry, I'll take care of it, my boy. Yes, sir. I, George, that boy has a head on his shoulders. Imagine buying a goat for only three dollars. On the installment plan. And no carrying charges. <laughs> He's going to grow up to be just as smart as his old uncle. Well, what's the verdict, Gildy? Huh? Well, Bertie got all upset about nothing, Horace. Leroy, explain the whole thing to me. It's entirely possible that that goat was a very shrewd investment. You mean you're going to keep the animal? Yes, indeed. Come on out in the backyard, Judge. Let's have a look at him, huh? But, Gildy, 
Why do you want a goat around the house? He's going to mow the lawn, Judge. Mow the lawn? A goat? Certainly. He'll eat the grass. Little Leroy's idea. I see. Yeah, quite a boy. He's developing a great head for business. I'm helping him, of course. <laughs> After you, Judge. Thank you. I thought Bertie said the goat had to go. Ah, uh, Bertie will get used to him. After he eats the grass, maybe he'll eat the tin cans. <laughs> then Bertie won't have to carry him out on Tuesdays. <laughs> Goats do not eat tin cans, Gilday. That's a fallacy. They just like the paper labels and the mucilage. Well, you ought to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. Wonder where he is. Oh, there he is, looking at us from behind the apple tree. Yeah. Uh, Gildy, if you don't mind, I think I'll wait on the porch. Oh, for it. All right, Judge. I'm going to get acquainted with him. Hello, goat. Hmm. Wonder what his name is. Probably Billy. Hello, Billy. Yeah, it is Billy, all right. <laughs> Pretty sociable little goat. <laughs> Coming out from behind the tree. He has nice horns, Gildy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, let's not get too friendly, Billy. I wonder why he's twitching his tail. Goat, don't look at me like that. Don't lower your head now. Now, Goat, Billy, you wouldn't want to butt me. I live here. I'm Leroy's uncle. You take my advice, Gildy. You run for it. Well, maybe if I just back up slowly. Oh, brother, he's coming. I better run for it. Open the door, Judge. It's open. Gee, I made it. Split the door right down the middle. That goat's got to go. And you too, Judge. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. Now, here's our last chance to tell you about Gildy's Blade. The amazing knife spatula, Parquet Margarine, is offering you at a tremendous saving. Thousands of orders have already been received for this unique bargain. The supply is limited. So listen once more to the exciting details, then act promptly. Gildy's Blade is a sensational new idea. It combines, for the first time, the three things you need most in kitchen cutlery. A fine knife for slicing. A fine knife for cutting. A fine kitchen spatula, all in one handle. Yes, Gildy's blade is a seven-inch blade of mirror-finished spring steel, set in an imported rosewood handle. One side of the blade has a lifetime serrated edge. It's a superb slicer for bread, cake, fruits, vegetables. The other side has a hand-honed, razor-keen straight edge for all kinds of cutting. And the blade itself is spatula-shaped. You slice, you cut, you turn, you mix, you scrape. All with this one superb implement. Now, you can't buy anything like Gildy's Blade at any store. If you could, it would sell for at least $2. But you can get this amazing knife spatula through Parquet Margarine for only 50 cents, plus the label or wrapper from a loaf of bread and the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine. Just mail your half dollar, your bread label or wrapper, and your Parquet end flap to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939. Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Include your own name and address. And don't wait. Get this amazing knife spatula. Send for Gildy's Blade tomorrow. get back to the great Gildersleeve. Yesterday, he was very proud when Leroy made his first business deal, the shrewd purchase of a $3 goat. Today, as our water commissioner wends his way homeward, he doesn't think so much of the deal. Hard for me to tell little Leroy to get rid of the animal. After all, I told him not to take the paper out. Still, I can't have that goat chasing me every time I leave the house. Someday, my luck's gonna run out. <laughs> Well, look at that. Peavy has a new window display. 
Hot water bottle. Nice. Hello, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> nice window display you have, PV. Well, I didn't know hot water bottles were that interesting. Well, they are to me. Anything that plugs water, I'm for. <laughs> well, I wouldn't sell a hot water bottle without a plug. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Plug in a hot water bottle? I get it, PV. What can I do for you this afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve? Sell you a hot water bottle? No, Peavy. Just stopped in on my way home. I'm going to get my car and take Catherine out to dinner. Oh? I thought perhaps you were spending the evening at home with your goat. What? <laughs> the judge was in. Oh, yes, the judge. Well, it's not my goat, Peavy. It's Leroy's. It's becoming a real problem. You don't say. Every time I set foot out of the house, he chases me. <laughs> my, my. Has he caught you yet? <laughs> He's not going to either. He doesn't bother Leroy, nor Marjorie, nor Bertie. I can't understand why he goes after me. Well, perhaps he considers you a better target. Yeah. <laughs> Just an observation, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, well, something has got to be done about the creature. When I was a boy, I had a goat, and I don't mind saying he had a lot of good qualities. Really? Say, Peavy, I'll bet you'd like to buy this goat. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Cheap. Free? Peavy, if I were to give him to you free, what would you say? Nah. Ooh. You leaving, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, Bertie. I'm taking Miss Milford to dinner this evening. It'll be just you and Marjorie and Leroy. Yeah, me and Marjorie and Leroy and that no good goat. <laughs> well, don't you worry about him, Bertie. You know where I found him sleeping this morning, Mr. Gillsleeve? I'm afraid to ask. Up in Leroy's old pigeon roost. What? He climbs like a cat and he'll sleep any place. He's a no good goat. <laughs> well, he's no friend of mine, Bertie. No, sir. There's good goats and there's bad goats. He's a bad goat. That's right, Bertie, but I've got to go now. You going out through the backyard? Yeah. You want me to go with you? <laughs> no, I guess I'll make it all right. Thank you, Bertie. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later. Uh, there. Now, if I can just make it to the car without attracting that goat's attention. He doesn't seem to be around any place. <laughs> so far, so good. Hey! Leroy. Have you seen Billy? No, and he hasn't seen me. Gosh, I can't find him. Well, good. I wonder if he jumped the fence and ran away. He might have. You know how goats are, Leroy. Here today and gone tomorrow, thank goodness. But look, he's my business investment. I've still got to pay for him. Well, my boy, if he's disappeared, I'll pay for him. Gladly. No kidding? Absolutely, my boy. Okay, he's disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's your three dollars. Is that right? Well, I've been uh, checking the prices on goat sunk, and they just went up. Oh, they did. This one just went up 50 cents. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm buying a goat on the bull market. <laughs> yeah, but it's worth it, my boy. Here's your extra 50 cents. Thanks, Unc. How am I doing in business? Yeah, better than I am. <laughs> Gotta get out of here while I've got enough money left to take Catherine to dinner. Leroy, who left his car door open? I guess I did. Remember last night when you made a run for the back porch? I had to go out and turn off the ignition. Oh, yes. Well, goodbye, my boy. Bye. Wonder where that darn goat went to. Where would I go if I were a goat? Nah, he wouldn't go there. <laughs> well, he's gone. That's all that matters. Nice little place Catherine and her mother have here. Kiki Kiki Katie, beautiful Katie. Ah, here she comes. You're the only g -g -g girl that I adore. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oop, her mother. <laughs> well, good evening, Mrs. Milford. <laughs> My, you have such a rich voice. Oh, well, thank you. 
You're all man, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> uh, is Catherine ready? Hello, Throckmorton. Here she is. She's been primping for you. Oh, Mother. Well, nice primping, too. <laughs> You look stunning, Catherine. Doesn't Mr. Gildersleeve say the nicest things? He sang to me. Oh. Uh, we better be going, huh? <laughs> Ta-ta, Mrs. Milford. Ta-ta. Bye, Mother. Nice old soul, your mother. Mm-hmm. She's one of your staunchest admirers. Mm-hmm. Nice of you to take me out to dinner, Throckmorton. Well, I'm ready for it. Climb in, Katie. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've had a hectic day. You have? Yeah, we've had a goat on our hands. A goat? Mm Mm-hmm. Did somebody turn it in on a water bill? (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. Leroy brought him home, but at last we're rid of him. Oh. What did you do with him? I didn't have to do anything. He just disappeared. I suppose little Leroy's brokenhearted. Not Leroy. He made money off the creature hand over fist. (laughs) Well, he'll probably come back. Nah. That goat's miles away by this time. You know, goats are supposed to be so smart. Well, this one didn't fool me. I had his number right from the very beginning. (gasps) Good heavens. What's that? Oh, Billy. He was sleeping in the back seat. Oh, for goodness sake, a stowaway goat. I'm sorry, Gatlin. I'll have to take him back home and pick you up later. Yes, I guess you'd better. Confounded animal. This time, Leroy has got to get rid of him. Stop breathing down the back of my neck. orders. You can't stop a nibble on every lawn we pass. <laughs> Come on, will you? He sent you, Leroy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Milford. Where are you going with that goat? Well, I don't know. I'm trying to get rid of him. Uncle says he never wants to see him again. I can't understand it. My, he's a nice little fellow. Yeah, but I can't find anybody who wants him. I've been all over the neighborhood. It's getting awfully late, Leroy. Don't you think you should go home? I don't dare go home till I find somebody to take Billy. Oh, you poor boy. How much do you want for him? Ah, uh, you wouldn't want him, Mrs. Milford. Well, I was just thinking I could send him out to my brother's farm. Hey, that'd be keen. He'd like a farm. <laughs> How much did you pay for the goat? Three dollars. Will you take three dollars for him? Again? I mean, yeah, sure. (laughs) Bring him in the yard and I'll get my purse. Oh, boy, another three bucks. I should have been in business long ago. (laughs) We'll close the gate so he can't get out. (laughs) Ah, this is awfully nice of you, Mrs. Milford. Uncle appreciate it. I'm glad to do it. I like to do nice things for Mr. Gildersleeve. been a lovely evening, Throckmorton. Yeah. Too lovely to break up this early, Catherine. Oh, well, I have to be at the hospital in the morning. Yeah, darn hospital. Care to swing on the porch a while? Oh, it's so dark out here. Well, there's only a quarter moon, and that's behind the house. Great night for swinging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we might sit in the swing a minute. Good. Uh, uh, uh. What are you laughing at? I was just thinking about you and that goat. Yeah, him. I think he'd just like to tease you. Well, he wasn't a bad goat. It was good business experience for Leroy. Yes, I suppose. Sure. Bringing up a boy these days, a person has to make a few little sacrifices. But I feel that I came out ahead all the way around. Hmm. Certainly is dark out here. Mm -hmm. I can hardly see you. Oh? Well, I'll move a little closer so you won't lose me. (laughs) That's close enough. I can see you now. (laughs) Nice. There's your mother at the piano. 
Oh, nice left hand. Mm -hmm. Drink to me only with thine eyes. One of my favorites. Yeah, mine too. Drink to me only with thine eyes and I will pledge with mine or leave a kiss within the cup and I'll not ask for wine the thirst that from the soul doth rise doth ask a drink divine but might I Did I hear a goat? He, I did. I see him. He's lying right there on the porch. Oh, for... How did he get over here? He's getting up, Frockmore. So am I. Good night, Catherine. Don't run, Frockmore. Don't run, she says. See you later. Look out, Frockmore. If I can just make it to the gate. Oh. <laughs> I didn't make it. Flat on my face. Frockmorton, did he knock you down? No, I always go home this way. <laughs> what a man goes through to raise a boy these days. Leroy! We'll hear from Gildy again very shortly. Final instructions. To get Gildy's Blade Amazing Knife Spatula, just send 50 cents, the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread, and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Our supply of Gildy's Blades is limited. Get your order in tomorrow. What you doing? I'm lying on the couch, resting. Why are you lying on your stomach? Never mind. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I sure made money on that goat. Got any more business ideas, Unc? Yes, my boy. You go back to Buzz Callahan and tell him you'll take that paper out. But, Unc, that's working with my feet again. You said I should work with my head. Leroy, from now on, you work with your feet. It's much safer for me. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Gloria Holiday, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. And don't forget to send for one of those uh, Gildy's Blades. They're really practical, folks, really useful. And what a bargain at the price Parquet is asking. I want every friend, that is every lady friend, eh, of mine to have one. So get that little Billy Doo off to the Kraft Foods Company tomorrow. You'll be glad you did. Good night, folks. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. But when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Next, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.